Did you sign up for eToro but don't know where or how to get started? Or are you right now just considering joining eToro? Well, either way, then this is the video you've been looking for. My name is Christian Rauchenwald and I'm a popular investor on eToro. And in this video, I will show you a few tips and tricks on how to best use eToro to make your money work for you with the least possible effort. But before we get to that, as always, let's get the usual disclaimer out of the way. Everything I share in this video is my personal opinion and in no way financial or professional advice of any kind. You should always do your own research, consult certified professionals, draw your own conclusions and make your own decisions. Besides that, as mentioned, I've been using eToro now for a bit more than two years and down the road also managed to become a so-called popular investor with a return of 29.8% during 2020, followed by a return of 34.78% in 2021, and last but not least, a performance of a bit more than 30% so far this year. That is, at least at the time of recording this video. If you would like to know how I'm doing right now, you can follow the links in the description below to take a look at my portfolio and performance up until yesterday. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about eToro and how you can get the best results with the least amount of effort. Obviously, option number one to make money on eToro would be to trade or invest on your own, but I have the strong feeling that since you're watching a video for beginners right now that you might not have a lot of experience in that area so far, so I'm going to say this the way I see it. If you have know a little experience investing on your own and don't know at least one trading strategy that has a proven track record, then you simply shouldn't risk your money this way. After all, there's a reason why the stockbroking industry has the unset 1990 rule, stating that 90% of traders lose 90% of their capital within their first 90 days of account opening. And there is no shame in that, nobody is born a master and believe me I was no exception to that rule when I first dabbled with forex trading and other forms of investments years ago and busted my fair share of trading accounts as well. Don't get me wrong, I too still have a lot to learn but I'm confident by now enough in my ability to manage my portfolio and achieve reasonable profits nowadays. So if your plan is to eventually manage your own portfolio actively that's great but you should then probably start on eToro's demo account and pick a trading strategy that you believe has potential and give it a try there first without risking your own money until you're confident that you'll be able to achieve profits consistently. And if that's what you would like to do, then I recommend that you later check out the video I made about the number one strategy that I'm using to manage my portfolio by clicking on the card up here. Either way, even if you get started on eToro's demo account, that doesn't mean that you can't be profitable on eToro from the start, because eToro, among other things, allows you to simply copy other investors' portfolios with the click of a button, and that would be option number two and for most people the best way to get started, at least in my opinion. The good thing about copy trading on eToro is that you have an abundance of users to choose from that you can copy and even better, that you can copy as many as you want at the same time. For each investor that you want to copy, you can decide for yourself how much of your money you want to copy that investor's portfolio with and also at what percentage loss you'd like to instantly stop copying in case somebody that performed well in the past suddenly keeps making mistakes and losing money. However, there are also a few crucial things you have to know before investing your money to copy other investors on eToro. First, eToro assigns a risk score to each profile that gives you a rough idea about the volatility to expect and is something you always should consider. A lower risk score means in that case that it's less likely that you'll have to deal with huge swings and losses in a short period of time, whereas a risk score of let's say 9 or 10 indicates that there is a reasonable chance that the investor might wipe out their portfolio sooner or later. In other words, an investor with a 10% return and a risk score of 3 is often a better choice to copy than one with the same or slightly higher return and a risk score of, for example, 8. However, just like with everything else in investing, there are no guarantees. An investor that today has a risk score of 3 can also change his strategy or make mistakes and just a few days later have a completely different risk score, but it's still one of the metrics that is useful when you try to decide who you want to trust your money with. Second, besides the risk score, the general statistics of the eToro user you want to copy are also relevant. 
but unfortunately flawed to some extent. So it's not enough to just look at the overall performance shown on the stats tab of the profile, but you should also always look at the user's chart. To give you an extreme example, if we look at this investor here, the stats tab shows us a return of 14,673% for 2021, with a return in December alone of 22,400%. If we then however check the user's chart specifically for the last year, it looks like he lost money during 2021. In this case specifically, the popular investor also got asked about this and admitted that the numbers were wrong, although he doesn't understand why. He mentions that he withdrew his funds in December and then deposited them again in February. Although he might not know this yet, but in this case he very likely received a small dividend payment after withdrawing, so he might have had a few cents left in his account and then got a dividend payment from one or more of his previous investments that were 22,400% bigger than the few cents left in the account. And suddenly eToro shows that as his monthly performance, because considering the money he had left in the account, that's the actual return the dividend cost. Errors like that also happen in some cases when users deposit additional fund into their accounts, like I did for example in the beginning of 2022. And that's why it's important to not just look at the stats, but to also check the chart of users that you are planning to invest your money in. Third, as you might have guessed, popular investors on eToro also receive a compensation from eToro. Starting at the champion popular investor tier, that compensation begins at $400 to $800 per month and turns into a percentage of the assets under management on higher tiers. In short, the more money is used to copy a popular investor's portfolio, the more that investor receives from eToro every month as well. An elite pro popular investor, which is the highest tier one can reach at the time of recording this video, receives at least $200,000 per year, as long as there are at least $10 million worth of user funds copying their portfolio. In other words, popular investors have a personal interest in getting people to copy them with as much money as possible and also might try to convince them to stay when their strategy doesn't produce any returns anymore. One example of this would be this popular investor here that after losing almost half of the portfolio's value asks users to adjust their stop loss level so they don't stop copying their portfolio. While I don't want to include specific usernames, in this case the profile belongs to an elite popular investor that receives 1.5% of the assets under management per year in compensation from eToro and considering that even after the almost 50% loss the account still has between 2 and 5 million dollars copying the portfolio that's anywhere from 30 to 75 thousand dollars per year even if the portfolio is losing money as long as it has at least 500 thousand dollars of user funds copying it its risk score doesn't exceed a certain level and the account balance itself stays above $50,000. That's why, in my opinion, you also want to avoid popular investors that are more focused on getting more users to copy them than they are in actually managing their portfolio. Now before we'll take a look at how exactly you can find the right popular investors to copy for you, there's one last thing I want to cover and that is the ongoing effort copying someone on eToro will bring with it. Once you picked one or more popular investors or regular eToro users you'd like to copy, it's important to at least once per month but preferably once per week check your account and keep an eye out for any noticeable increase in risk score of the portfolios you are now copying. As part of that task you should also quickly check each investor investors feed and read their latest posts on the feed to see if they are maybe getting desperate to keep copiers or if they maybe announced a bigger change in their strategy. And depending on that and their actual performance, you should then decide if you want to keep copying someone or if it's maybe time to stop and look for another now better suitable portfolio to copy. After all, it's worth more to invest one hour of your time per month to think about your money and how to make it work for you than to work 30 days for it. But that's it. So the only thing left for me to do in this video is to show you how I would go about picking suitable portfolios to copy and for that I'm going to share my screen with you and first navigate from the eToro home screen to the discover section on the left. And just in case if you don't yet have an eToro account you can find links to sign up down in the description below as well. On the discover page you can see a section with the headline copy trader and simply press the view all on the right to go where we actually want to go. Once there we'll just use the filter option in the top right to narrow down our list starting by defining the risk score we are comfortable with. 
I'm personally okay with a risk score of 1 to 6, but depending on your own preferences and risk appetite, you might want to select something lower here. Once we press apply here, we'll get to see a different view and we can adjust our filters further. The next thing I would filter by is the trader status to only show me popular investors because while they have a financial incentive to gain more copiers, they are also still investing their own money and more importantly, depending on their current popular investors tier, also have to have at least some track record. Next, we should adjust the filter for the daily and weekly historical drawdown. So how much an investor at most lost during one day or one week in the past. And I'm simply going to choose 5% for both in this case. Once we click on apply, that already narrows our list down to eight popular investors that meet all our criteria that we can now check out individually. And you might also notice that my portfolio is not among those eight remaining and that's because my drawdowns tend to be a bit bigger, but as a result, my profits usually are as well. If we have much more than this, we might want to narrow the list down further by adjusting the past performance, time period and or risk score setting further until we have anywhere from three to 10 populous investors left. The next step would now be as mentioned to look at those eight individually and depending on your available capital to pick one or more to copy their portfolio. And as mentioned earlier, that review would start on the stats tab, but also include the chart tab and we would prefer popular investors that show consistent results and a relatively static risk score. Depending on how many years of history a popular investor has, it's also worth to take a closer look at the performance during the short crash in March 2020 and how the portfolio performed back then, as well as obviously the performance during 2022, where most indices lost 20% or more during the first six months alone. If you end up with more suitable profiles than your budget allows, you can either adjust your filters further or check out the investor's newsfeed to make your final decision based on how often and what kind of updates the investor provides and to get an idea how transparent they are about what they are doing and why. To show you who I would pick out of those eight left, I'm simply gonna quickly open all of them in a separate tab and we're quickly gonna check each of them out to see if they're suitable or not. So let's get started with number one here. We can see he's active since 2020, similar to my portfolio and achieved roughly 20% here, 25% here and 16% so far this year. He has a quite stable risk score of maximum five and an average of four and managed this year while the markets are actually more challenging to navigate to actually reduce his risk score for the last two months. Besides that, if we look down further, we can see that he only makes 3.05 trades per week and has an average holding period of one month, which is an important metric for later when we actually get to copy someone. Now, as mentioned multiple times, the stats here are also influenced by deposits and withdrawals. Therefore, we'll also have to check out the chart. And we are first gonna look at the this year's performance by saying current year. And we can see that he has a return of 11.54% according to the chart. And last year's performance shows a return of 47.34% here. So much more than what the stats actually show us. Additionally, his drawdown weekly and daily is obviously below 5% since we filtered for that. And the yearly drawdown with 9.32% is also in order. So we'll definitely keep this one back to basically consider him as a final candidate. If we look on the next one here, we can see the performance itself is in fact not that great because after we consider potential taxes and inflation, you'll actually end up losing value of your money and you will not even beat inflation. Inflation, although this investor here has a very long history. If we still check out the rest, we can see that his risk score is at a consistent two with a maximum risk score three, which makes this a low risk investment. But for my personal taste, the return is simply too low. And I would prefer to take a little bit more risk instead of being on the safe side, but actually losing purchasing power. And that's why I personally will simply close that tab here and move on to the next. 
Now this one here is a little bit tricky. He has a fairly low risk score and a decent return. However, he doesn't have long-term history. There is no 2020 in there. There is no real crash other than the beginning of this year. So it's really hard to decide if this will turn out as a good investment or a bad one. Since we still have a couple profiles left and the first one definitely looked good, I would also close this one for now. And with this popular investor, I would also personally not copy him simply because the performance the last two years wasn't really great and didn't even beat inflation. And while this year's performance is great, especially if we consider the crash that's currently ongoing or is ongoing in the early parts of 2022, if we look at his risk score, we also see that from a solid risk score of one, he actually increased his risk score over the last couple of months, which means he either adjusted his strategy or his strategy just became more risky during the current market situation, which is why I personally also would not copy this one. Just for completeness sake, let's also take a look at the chart and here focus on this year performance, uh, current year. And we can see that this year he has a return of 11%. If we look at last year's performance, we can see that it actually also shows an 11% return. So again, graph and stats don't match up, which makes it a tricky decision here. And if we check the last two years, we can see an overall return from actually 9% and an initial loss in March 2020 that is not visible on the stats page if I'm not mistaken let's check that again no we only see the April here so initially here actually he lost a lot apparently and worked his way back up which means in a situation where the market crashes faster his strategy or his strategy back then didn't work out that well which is why I would also close that popular investor which leaves us with four more to review this one here, just like the one before, we only have one year history. Last year's return for basically seven months is quite okay. This year's return so far is not that great. And if we see in between a risk score of eight means that here in this month something went very wrong and he took unnecessary risk. Considering the lack of long-term history and that risk score here, I would personally also not copy this user and we move on to the next one. And this popular investor's profile already looks again a bit better. In March 2020, he only lost 6%, but since he opened the account back then, we don't know if he was there for the entire crash or just joined at the end of it. Besides that, his 2020 return is definitely good. The 2021 return, apparently he didn't do anything for the first quarter of the year, but with 11.45% would still be good. And this year's return is not that great, but also on the better side, again, if we consider that indices and many popular investors lost a lot of money already this year. Now if we also take a look at the risk score we can see that it used to be quite stable here but over the last couple of months more precisely this year actually increased probably because the strategy also makes it harder to navigate the current market situation. Just again for completeness sake let's also take a look at the chart and there we see last two years he's actually still down 10% according to the chart and last year alone would be a 3% return and current year would be actually a 1% loss. So apparently here with his stats, although they show a 5% return, overall it appears that thanks to deposit and withdrawals, the stats look positive while in fact he is at minus 1%, something like that, which means while we cannot verify exactly which of those two metrics is 100% accurate or what's the median, so what the exact number is that we could expect or that he actually achieved, it's definitely, considering that we already have a better candidate, not a good choice, at least for me, so I'm going to close this one as well. Leaving us with two more popular investors to look at. The first one here looks very promising. He has a long time history, although he wasn't active for years. We can ignore everything that's down here. It looks like he dabbled with investing and lost basically a lot of money or blew up his portfolio, which is sad is something that most people, me included, go through initially. Then he wasn't active for a couple of years and joined again during the crash in March 2020, where he apparently doubled his portfolio in 2020, achieved an okay return for 2021. And this year also considering the market, how it's behaving and the overall performance of the indices is doing a fairly good job. Now, if we check the risk score here, we can actually see that his risk score also slightly increased this year, but within reason and that in between he was also managed to reduce it again. So that 
is definitely one of the candidates I would keep left for the final decision. Now, if we check the bottom, we can see that he makes roughly a little bit more than one trade per day and holds them on average for 3.5 weeks, which again is relevant later when we decide to copy somebody. Last but not least, we'll also check the chart and we can see for the current year, a roughly 9% return. For the last year, according to the chart, it would be 24% return. And for the last two years, it would actually be more than 270% return. As we see here during his first year in 2020, he actually made most of his return, but since then it's also been steadily going up. Considering all of that, I would also keep this investor for the last selection and move on to the last profile here, where we can see again a performance of 40% last year, which would be quite good, but no long-term history. The risk score is relatively stable at five, but compared to the other two candidates that we already have based on the missing long-term history, I probably would not copy this trader or investor as well. Just for the completeness sake, again, let's check the chart. And here, if we check last two years, it actually shows that he is at a loss of 1% roughly. Last year made 23% and current year is at a loss of 4% roughly. Although the stats show a loss of 0.73%. So with that, we would also get rid of that. That leaves us with two popular investors that are suitable for copying. And the last thing to do would be to simply press the copy button and decide how much of our money we want to copy that particular popular investor with and where we would want the stop loss level to be. So at what point we automatically want to stop copying that portfolio if the popular investor starts losing money. Additionally, we would also have to decide if we would want to copy existing trades of the popular investor or only future positions. To decide that, we would simply take another look at the stats page and scroll down and again check the average holding time and the trades per week metrics. If an investor is holding positions for longer than a few days or weeks and is not opening a lot of trades every week, it often makes sense to copy their existing positions as well. Whereas if they are trading a lot and holding each position only for a few days, then there's no real benefit to doing that. Once you started copying one or more popular investors, the only thing left to do as said is to take a look at how things are doing, ideally once per week, for example, over the weekend, to check if any of your copied popular investors shows a drastic change in risk score or performance, and if needed, replace them with another investor by repeating the steps we went through earlier in this video. Additionally, in order to increase your results further, you might want to consider adding additional funds monthly to your portfolio. But other than that, there is nothing else to do. Instead of getting next to no or maybe even negative interest rates on the money on your regular bank account, you are now invested in different assets and depending on the choice of popular investors, also diversified across different industries and countries. And all that's left for you to do, as said, is keep an eye on things from time to time and be patient. That's it for today. If you have any questions about eToro or their popular investors program, simply leave them in the comments down below or use the link down below to leave a post or comment on my eToro profile. Thanks for watching. See you in one of my other videos. Till then, bye-bye.